Yes, All indeed. All right, questions. Okay, time for Bring It On. The first question is from Angela Pat, who says, how do I help a friend who tried to take her own life? Why do people kill themselves? Well, you know, in the law, they, they're deemed to be uh, uh, insane. The, the, the sane person wouldn't do that. They're despairing. Life doesn't mean anything. Well, I'm not worth anything, which means you've got to tell that person how important they are, that there's nobody on earth can do what they do, that they're so important to the lives of their loved ones and others, that uh, their life can count not only now, but other things. Then you explore with them what their talents are, what they can really cr offer. You get to a point of despair. The other thing about suicide, you've got to make sure they're not taking some tranquilizers or some um, of these mood-altering drugs because they say so many of the uses of guns are because of people who are hopped up on, mm. on medication. Yeah. So, okay. Well, and sometimes, it, as you said, it truly is a, a mental illness. Yes, yeah, but, but mostly more than anything, you, and if it's depression, remember, depression is clinical. It's, it's just not feeling bad. Okay. Mm. This is Julie who says, I know how important tithing is, and my husband tithes regularly. However, he doesn't realize what it takes to run our household. There are times that I will use the tithes to prevent utilities from being turned off or to buy groceries. Am I stealing from God, and am I going to hell, or does God know that this is necessary? My husband doesn't understand. No, you're not going to hell if you don't tithe. We, you know, we get that out of your mind. You know, God isn't some uh, merchant who sits up in his counting house. Ah, she shorted me of ten bucks, so she's going to hell. Doesn't happen. No way. Okay, you want a blessing? Malachi said, "Prove me with your tithes and offerings. If I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing, you can't contain it." So you are robbing God, and you're robbing yourself. So. You're slipping out the tithe money and using it for other things, and you, what you're saying is, I don't trust God to supply. I just think I've got to help him a little bit. <laughs> and God doesn't need your help. And what you need to, he would needs from you is your obedience. So why don't you start being obedient? And uh, you look at what blessing is going to come. But no, you're not going to hell because you don't tithe. That's not in the Bible. Go ahead. This is David who says, I work with two people who have decided that they are females. I know what the Bible says about homosexuality, but is it wrong to refer to them as females since they've had their gender status changed in the eyes of the law? Uh, Why would you have to refer to them as females uh, by I don't name? understand or? all that, but uh, I think there are uh, men who are in a woman's body Mm -hmm. It's very rare, but it's true, or women that are in men's bodies, and uh, they, they, they want a, a sex change, and that is a very permanent thing. Believe me, when you have certain body parts uh, amputated uh, and you have shot up with various kinds of hormones, uh, it's, a, it's a radical procedure. Uh, I, I don't think there's any sin associated with that. I, I don't condemn somebody for doing that. But somebody who just says, well, I'm really a woman, I, I question the validity of that statement. But they say they're, they're counted as female. You, you don't count somebody as female unless they really are, or male unless they really are. In this instance, so this is a person who works with two people, so he doesn't really know their intentions no. or know their personal uh, medical scenario. It's not for you to decide or to judge. All right. Okay, this is April who says, I have been physically, mentally, and verbally abused by my husband for 13 years. I left him in November 2012. I'm so confused about whether God permits me to divorce my husband and move on into a life without abuse. My relationship with God is more important to me than anything. Any help you can provide would be appreciated. April, you're a wonderful woman. It's a miracle you didn't take a gun and kill him, but uh, fortunately you didn't. Yeah, really, <laughs> yeah, really. But that's horrible, isn't it? Thirteen years of physical, mental, and verbal abuse. It's All right. There's something called the Pauline pri privilege, and I, I refer to that. Paul says, if the unbeliever is pleased to depart, let him depart. The brother or sister is not bound in a case like that. All right. Now, what if there is what I call constructive desertion? The spouse makes it impossible for you to live with them. 
Now, what your husband is doing is making it impossible for you, mentally, physically, and men, uh, morally, whatever, to live verbally. with him. Mm -hmm. Verbally. So, what in a sense, he's driving you out. And under the, uh, in that circumstance, uh, that is constructive desertion. Mm -hmm. And I think you could apply the Pauline privilege and say, look, I've got an unbelieving spouse, and he's not pleased, and therefore I'm not bound, mm -hmm. and so leave. I, I just, I, th I think you've got to, you, 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 God doesn't want you to be destroyed no. uh, by staying in some kind of a strange relationship. You've, you've given it the best try you could, and the Lord understands that, and He wants to work with you. But uh, uh, marriage is not a sentence of death. It really is. It's supposed to be a joyous union yeah. between two people. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely.